Here we go. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Oh, man, we are going to be in Second Samuel chapter 23 this morning. I hope your uh, Thursday is already starting out great. <laughs> um, there hasn't been too much already because uh, it's very early. Um, but man, yeah, we are jumping into Second Samuel chapter 23 today. I'm excited to dive into uh, this with you this morning. Um, and then uh, we're going to see what we have uh, that God has for us and his word. Um, there's some good stuff in here today. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. Uh, I hope your week's going well. Uh, let's um, let's talk about some announcements real quick before I got one more minute. Um, and so uh, as this weekend's coming up, uh, we are enjoying uh, on Saturday uh, for all my veterans out there this Saturday, it is Veteran Smile at Brickworks Dental. Uh, Derek Pham, uh, Navy veteran and dentist, uh, owns Brickworks Dental there and uh, does this once a year where he puts on uh, free dental care for all military veterans of all branches um, for that day. Uh, he has uh, taken care of me, he's taken care of so many veterans on um, that. And so we have a team that is out there um, during that time to help host, to help love on them, to help um, uh, you know, bring up the name of Fusion Church to those as well, uh, because we know that uh, we need more than just dental care in our lives. <laughs> we need spiritual care as well. And so we're excited to have a, a team of Fusionites uh, out there to help support. Uh, and then many of our Fusion individuals that are veterans themselves will also be getting dental care uh, from there. And so uh, if you're looking to support or just go out and say hi and shake hands with uh, the men and women uh, that have definitely sacrificed themselves uh, to do a great uh, job for this nation. Uh, go on out Saturday at Brickworks Dental itself, specifically uh, between 8 uh, a.m. and 2 uh, in the afternoon. And so then we have this weekend service. And then next week, October 29th, uh, we have our friends and family weekend. And so we're excited for that as well. Um, as we get into friends and family, we have all of our trunk or treats. We have a huge explosion of uh, trunks that are going to be out there. We're looking at uh, roughly about 30 trunks uh, that are going to have candy and and all sorts of really fun decorations. Um, my, I'm just going to shout out already just to help let you know, my man Gary Doan uh, is doing a trunk that is a McDonald's drive through. <laughs> so it's going to be it's going to be hilarious. Like there's some really, really cool designs. That's one that I, I just think is really fun. Uh, and so you won't want to miss it. And then on top of that, um, and it could have already changed. But the last time I checked my list, we have 22 people signed up for baptisms at just the EHT location. And then I know Cumberland County talking to my man, Pastor Jason over there, and he's looking at, uh, I think the last number he told me was about eight or nine or so at Cumberland County. So we are looking at close to 30 people across Fusion Church getting baptized that weekend. What a celebration to come out for. So you don't want to miss that. But let's get into today. Let's get into this morning. Uh, we have uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23 today that we're going to be diving into. And so let's pray and then let's see what God has for us this morning. Now, Father, we just come to you with open hearts and minds. We just come to you with, um, with ourselves just this morning, wanting to hear from you, uh, wanting to understand what your word has for us this morning. Uh, Lord, as we continue to just walk and journey with you, uh, we just pray for your guidance. We pray for your wisdom. Uh, we pray for your comfort uh, and care over us as we walk through situations. Uh, Lord, we just we just want to hear from you today. We just want to sit at your feet as your children. And Father, I just surrender myself to you as uh, I normally do, that this is your word and not mine. Uh, so teach me as well as you teach us everybody else through your amazing word. Lord, we just love you. Uh, and we pray all this in your mighty name. Amen. All right, let's dive in into 2 Samuel chapter 23. Um, 
I'm reading out of the NLT, but I'm going to also dive back into um, the uh, New King James Version for a couple areas in here um, after, and I'll point those out that I really think it uh, it brings out certain aspects of what is getting talked about in here um, in a really good way. Uh, but let's go through this. There's also a long list of names. I'm not going to read that part, um, but you'll get the gist of like what that list of names is for and what it's sim uh, symbolizing, basically. Um, all right. Verse one. These are the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, uh, speaks. David, the man who was raised up so high. David, the man anointed by God of Jacob. David, the sweet psalmist of israel the spirit of the lord speaks through me his words are upon my tongue the god of israel spoke the rock of israel said to me the one who rules righteously who rules in fear of god who is like the light of morning at sunrise like a morning without clouds like the gleaming of the sun on new grass after rain it is not is it not my family God has chosen? Yes, he has made an everlasting covenant with me. His agreement is arranged and guaranteed in every detail. He will ensure my safety and success. But the godless are like thorns to be thrown away, for they tear the hand that touches them. One must use iron tools to chop them down. They will be totally consumed by fire. Verse 8. These are the names of David's mightiest warriors. The first was um, Je Jehoshabim of Hecamite, who was the leader of the three. And we'll get into these three as we dive into here. Um, the three mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. The next in rank among the, the three was Eliezer, son of Doida, a descendant of Ahoa. <clears throat> once Eliezer and David stood together against the Philistine, Philistines when the entire Israelite army had fled. He killed Philistines until his hand was too tired to lift his sword. And the Lord gave him a great victory that day. The rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. Next in rank was uh, Shehemon, a son of Agi from Harar. Uh, one time the Philistines gathered at Leah and attacked the Israelites in a field of lentils. The Israelite army fled, but Shehemon uh, held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Once during the harvest, uh, when David was uh, at the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephim. The three who were among the 30, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet them there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time. And a Philistine detached, uh, a detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked uh, longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of the good water from the well by the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem and brought it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. The Lord forbid that I drink this, he exclaimed. This water is, a pre is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. Verse 18. Abishai, <clears throat> son of uh, Zeruah, uh, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill 300 enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Uh, Abishai uh, was the most famous of the 30 and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also uh, Behenahi, uh, son of Jehoad, 
a valiant warrior uh, from Cabazil. He did hold heroic deeds, which uh, included killing two champions of Mahab. Another time on snow on a snowy day, uh, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once armed only with a club, he killed an imposing Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Uh, Benahat <clears throat> uh, wrecked or wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hands and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Behenad uh, as famous as the three mighty warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the 30, though he was not one of the three, and David made him captain of his bodyguard. Other members of the 30 include this long list of individuals, there are 37 in all, the word of the Lord. So as we get into uh, what all of this means, we see a couple of different themes. Uh, the first is this is David's last psalm. Now, it, it, some say that this is these are the last words of David. Of course, we don't uh, we don't really believe these were the exact last words of him. But these were his last recorded words as in a psalm. These were the last recorded words that he wrote himself uh, in a psalm uh, for us and for us to understand. He's reflecting on his life because he's near the end of his life and he realizes that. Um, there is, of course, still an, uh, some more stories. There's still some more as not only we go through here, but even uh, in uh, First Kings and First Chronicles. But we can see that David is near the end of his life. And he goes through here and he kind of does this self-title right at the beginning. Um, whether he wrote that title or it's actually uh, a title description uh, given to him uh, by who's recording this and taken from what he wrote. This is David, the son of Jesse. It starts out with that because it, it's this idea that he's just the son of Jesse. Jesse wasn't a, a big prime predominant name uh, of anybody uh, at the time. And it was just mainly an idea of letting you know that he came from humble beginnings. Uh, Saul used that as almost a derogatory way of going at David saying, you come from nothing. But isn't that our God? Isn't that who we love and we worship is that though that man and the enemy of our souls would love to use things against us, use things to put us down, use things to show us how we don't amount to anything is really to bring God glory in the fact that it's not on us. It's no matter where we come from, God can lift us up as long as we are faithful to him, as long as we are continuously walking and journeying with him as David did. David's faith towards God never wavered. Yes, he walked with him, journeyed with him. He, he had arguments with him. Uh, he sinned against him. But David always stayed faithful in the fact of even realizing and repenting of his sin and coming to grips with it when it was brought up or when it was called out or when he even recognized it himself. We'll see that in the chapter tomorrow that he recognized his own sin even himself and says, Lord, forgive me, you know, and that's, that is the heart that God wants for all of us. We're not going to be perfect, but it's progress. We're not going to be uh, able to keep the law perfectly because that's the whole purpose of uh, the law of Moses is to let us know we cannot do it ourselves and we can't do it within our own flesh and our own desires to want to follow him perfectly. It's not going to happen. Unfortunately, there's too much in this world with sin and everything going on. And so we must have a savior. We must have our faith. We must have repentant of heart. We must be in communion with our Lord. And that's what David continued to do the entire time. And it all starts with a humble beginning and a humble heart. So that's why it says at the very beginning, David, the son of Jesse. Now, of course, they always, this is also a, sim, uh, a common way of addressing somebody. But most of the time when you hear somebody saying this person, the son of somebody else, it's because that other 
person, the son of their father of who they are, is somebody to be noteworthy of, but not in the case of David so much. David, the man who was raised up so high, you know, this was, this is exactly the story. David was the youngest. He wasn't even brought out in front of his brothers when, um, when Samuel came out, the prophet to anoint him, uh, Samuel came through and said, Jesse, where are all your sons? He brings out all of his sons, but David, but David's out in the field, still tending to the sheep. Even his own family put him down to the point of not thinking he was even worthy enough to be seen by the prophet. That, hey, just go handle the sheep. Clearly, the anointed one is not you. It's one of my other sons that are older than you. That humble beginning again. But David's faith, David's just putting his head down, being obedient, grinding through, and having faith in his God, even from a young age. And there's a level in, in that where it's just, it's that should be speaking to our youth. That should be speaking to our young adults right there. From a young age, being able to just be faithful, just keep our heads down and grind through and being obedient to our Lord, doing whatever in that in time, you will be lifted up by our Lord for a very, very special purpose. It's those that just continue to hold fast to our God. David goes into his psalm here, and it really talks a lot about the truth of his life and his relationship with the Lord, and really speaks to how the Lord has really deeply impacted his life and been a part of that. And it's really another teaching moment for all of us. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. The more and more we press in and have a relationship with our God, we're going to understand how he thinks. We're going to understand how he operates. We're going to understand his word. The more we read his word, the more exactly in our New Testament context that the Holy Spirit brings that up in our lives, reminds us of scripture, reminds us of God's word, reminds us of uh, his way of doing things instead of doing it our own way. And David just continued to walk with the Lord through ups and downs, through fear, through uh, anxiety, through um, doubt, through battles, through conquest, through uh, highs and lows. He did not waver from loving his God, no matter what, even in his own sin, even in his own sin. The spirit of the Lord is on me. And so in, in verse three, the, the God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, the one who rules righteously, who rules in fear of God. Now, of course, David was king, so he's really putting it in context of him being a uh, king, uh, having the responsibility of the throne, having the responsibility of uh, all of Israel uh, in that kind of context. But we all have our own levels of responsibility. And are we taking charge of that in the way that God wants us to, in the way that we should have fear, reverence, respect, and love for God? Are we operating that way whenever we have uh, responsibilities to uphold? Maybe that's just responsibilities at home, raising our children, uh, men leading our homes as the priest of our homes, uh, taking care and loving our wives, wives loving and respecting back towards our husbands, having that, uh, that unity that is marriage itself, that we lead our families well, that we, and when we lead our families well, then we lead our communities well. And then when our communities are good, man, things get better and better. But unfortunately, we see the decline of that right now because that's not how things are operating. So it has to start with us. But that's one of the things right here. Who rules in the fear of God? And yes, we want to, to a point, there's this level of, uh, well, that fear just means we need to have respect. But I want to also challenge you that there's a, uh, there's a real level of fear fear we should have of God because of we need to understand his capability. When we understand the power and the might and the ability that God has to just end it all immediately, that he can just do whatever he wants, there should be a level of reverent fear of God 
on top of that of respect and love because of his character and because of what he's done by sending his only son, Jesus, because he loves us so much. He's very strong, very mighty, more than anything else we could ever imagine. But his love is equal to that as well. And so there's this, we, it's hard sometimes for our human mind to put both of those together. But that's how good, amazing, and mighty our God is, is that those can equally be put together in him. And we also see that, so it says, uh, it's like the uh, light of morning at sunrise. It's like a morning without clouds. And we see the sunrise, and we always had those beautiful pictures of a sunrise that's, maybe it's coming over the water, uh, and you're on a beach, and there's hardly any clouds, and you just see the beam of light coming out. And that's what it's like. It's like a refreshing image. And how much is that? We hear that kind of statement a lot. When uh, somebody that's maybe not a Christian, that's around somebody that just embodies like uh, the love of the Lord, uh, that and the love of his word and doing things his way that many people just say, man, this person is refreshing to be around. This person is somebody that just, you know, I'm, I'm drawn to them because there's, there's not much negativity. There's not much gossip. There's not much uh, craziness going on and all of that. And uh, there's, there's just a refreshing sense to be around this person. Uh, and they lift me up just like, amazing beautiful sunset uh, sunrise or sunset picture that is just out there that it's like wow i i need something that like that in my life that's just it's refreshing uh and that's just how he's really painting this pu beautiful picture um of what it's like when we have relationship with god when we follow his decrees to the best of our ability uh, and, and we just let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in our lives. It is not now. Here's where I want to go to uh, New King James Version. Um, in here is that there's a part in here what really shows God's grace uh, over the merit of David. Is that uh, really in? Um, Verse five here in the new King James where it says, although my house is not so with God, yet he has made me an everlasting covenant ordered in all things and secure for this is all my salvation and all my desire. Will he not make it increase? That's verse five. You see that although my house is not so with God, Yet he has made with me an everlasting covenant. And we see this grace that's put over David, this anointing that's put over David. And it's not because of his merit. It's not because of his merit. Although my house is not so with God. That's the grace that our God has. Sometimes some people want to... Uh, try to challenge the Bible and say, well, you know, we hear all this grace really uh, talk all in the New Testament. Where's the grace in the Old Testament? We fire and brimstone and judgment and everything. And right here is an example. If you really read God's word, the amount of grace he has. That this is by grace. This is by faith. This is not of our works. So any man can boast says the Apostle Paul. That's our God. The character and nature of God is still intact from cover to cover of his precious word right here. And we see that in how he's treated David. And we see that this covenant, of course, has come true in the uh, person of Jesus Christ coming to earth through the bloodline of David both through his um, stepfather and mother Mary. That both genealogies, one in Matthew, one in Luke, uh, that both talk to either parent and saying that both of them lead right back to 
David and then beyond and going backwards that this covenant did not uh, finish it continued it continued on and we saw all of this continuing to happen and God's grace God's love not only for David but for all mankind that we may have salvation through Christ and so all of this was fulfilled and we see that he's also talking about in this final psalm here um, at the very end, he's talking about uh, those that have no faith in God, those that have no fear in God, those that are not trusting or even having any belief that God even exists. And we all know these people that they either follow something else, they follow um, somebody else, uh, they, I don't know, they've got crystals everywhere or something that they're just thinking something else is going to really fulfill that God-sized hole in their heart. But guess what? It just doesn't really work. And it's actually detrimental for us to try to handle them. And says, uh, but the sons of rebellion, and the Newton King James is put that way, the sons of rebellion shall be as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken by hand. It's a, it's, A warning and a sign of just saying, do not mess with those that have no fear, reverence, and belief and faith in the Lord. There's a level of like, keep them at arm's distance. Yes, we should proclaim God's goodness. Yes, we need to bring the gospel to all ears across the world and to everybody. But there are, we know, and unfortunately, the reality of it is that many, many will not accept will not take on uh, this gospel message and will be like thorns of the world. And so we need to tread lightly on how often we handle and how deeply interwoven these people can be in our lives. That they are like thorns. This is why we talk about uh, being unequally yoked in, in serious, deep relationships. Not just marriage, not just boyfriend, girlfriend kind of stuff. Uh, not just in those relationships unequally yoked, but who are your best friends? Who are the ones that you go to all the time? Who are the ones that are uh, around you and speaking life into you, or are they speaking death? That's a big matter of who are we uh, journeying through life with as people. And so that kind of brings me into the next section in here is, Who are your three? Who are your three? Who are the three people? uh, We see this not only exemplified here with David, that he has the three. They're called the three, right? It's um, that little phrase. It may not sound much, but it's like it's it's a uh, elite title. And here it's specifically elite title of warriors. But those are the types of three people we need in our lives are three literal, almost literal warriors. Because guess what? We are always in a spiritual battle. We're always in a spiritual battle all the time. The, The entire time that we are breathing on this earth, there is a spiritual battle going on around us. And so we need to make sure that our three closest around us are our warriors. We see that even Jesus had his top three. Yes, he had his 12 disciples, but in Mark 9 is where he goes up on the hill and it's the transfer, uh, transfer, I can't speak it today. Um, He is basically displaying his glory, right, to Peter, James, and John. Those are his top three. That's his inner circle of inner circle. Those are the three that he holds closer to him that get to see and uh, he reveals even more about himself too than even the uh, other 12. And so who are your three? As I was praying through this, I kind of really felt your three need not be perfect, but need to be protectors. Your three need not be famous but need to be fighters. And your three need not be luxurious, 
but they need to be loyal. These are some characteristics of uh, who these three are. We see that in a spiritual sense with Peter, James, and John, uh, but we see this with David's three here uh, in a warrior-like fashion, but we are in a spiritual battle all the time. And if we look to Ephesians 6, where it's the armor of God at that in, uh, in there, and everything that's listed is a defensive piece of uh, material, the helmet, the uh, waist, the sh- breastplate, um, the feet, the shield, except for one thing. And it's the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. And so, yes, we need to have swords. And one of our greatest swords is right here. This is like the number one thing that we need to be pressing into, that we need to be learning from and understanding. And that when the Holy Spirit brings up his word to us and reminds us in the certain circumstances, it is a weapon for us to use. Whether it's we're evangelizing to somebody and, and bringing the truth of our God to somebody, or it's just how do I do daily life, daily battles, dealing with circumstances, dealing with hardships, dealing with uh, pain, dealing with trials, dealing with testing uh, that we go through here. Are we using the sword of the spirit, God's word in our daily lives to fight through life? Are we? Or are we just playing Christian? And the best way to do this is you can't fight alone. Nobody's, David didn't win any battles by himself. Even David and Goliath, David still had the support of everybody behind him. He had the approval of the king. He still, he could not do that by himself. And he still always had God with him. You can't do life alone. You can't do life alone without your three, without your 30, because you see the 30 after here, which is actually 37, but uh, that's probably a title that they got when it was 30 and then some more uh, jumped on board over time. But just maintain that title, the 30. Who are your boys? Who are your girls? Who are the ones that are coming around you, that are battling life with you, that are willing to throw down and say, you know what? Something's coming against you and we're going to pray against this. We're going to battle through this. We're going to go and seek guidance. We're going to go seek wisdom. We're going to go seek the face of the Lord. And we want to win this because it's already won in his name. In his name, it's already won. But who are your three? Who are your fighters? Who are your protectors? Who are your uh, loyal people behind you to go through life just as David had? That is so huge for us. That's why we do connect groups at Fusion Church. That's why we do um, uh, serving teams as well. Now my closest friends, guess what? This morning, I'm about to leave. You see my bag packed behind me. I'm going on a refreshing trip with my warriors, with actually me. And I've got my, not my 30, but I got 20. I got 20 guys going with me to this weekend. We're out of here. You won't see me on Sunday. And we're going to get refreshing. We're going to go seek the face of the Lord. And we are going to press in and get that renewal together and fight through life who are your three who are your 30 where are your people and if they're not following the lord they're not picking up the uh, word as their sword they may not be the warriors you need they may not make it in that inner circle i wouldn't even put them in my 30 circle or my 12, and definitely not in my three. That is a question for you. And we always hear that saying, uh, I can tell you your future if you show me your friends. In the secular world, we, we've heard that. That will, that's a way of guarding your heart. Who's speaking into your heart? That's a way of guarding your mind. Who's feeding into your mind? 
these are huge, huge things that have helped David become successful. And so that's my challenge to you is evaluating yourself, evaluating your life, evaluating who is around you, who's speaking life into you. And if they're not speaking life into you, you may need to put them in a little bit more arm's distance and bring others in that will and that do so that they can be protectors, so that they can be fighters, and so they can be loyal around you. And so as we close today and as we pray, I pray that uh, God helps and shows you that, that if you feel that you are alone and you don't have that, that I pray that uh, God shines a light on those that need to be your three, that need to be within your 30, that need to be in those two inner circles around your life to lift you up. And I pray also, if you're going through a hard time and you have that inner circle, that they strengthen and embolden you with God's word, that they are around you to lift you up, that they are around you to pray for you, that they are around you to do that spiritual battle of life and to remind ourselves that guess what? Yes, we may have to fight it now, but the victory is already won in our God. And that's Jesus Christ. So let's pray. And let's have an amazing Thursday. Let's have an amazing weekend. And we can't wait to see you uh, at service. We can't wait to see you um, for these uh, nearly 30 baptisms coming up on Friends and Family on October 29th. We'll see you then. Let's pray. Let's have a great day. Father, we just, uh, we just thank you for your word today. Father, we just I just lift up all of those that may feel lonely today, that feel like they don't have their three, that may not feel like they even have 30 or anything, that they don't have people speaking life into their lives. Lord, I just pray that right now you 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 bring those people into their lives, that you bring those that are uh, holding your word fast, that have fear in you, that have reverence in you, that have love for you, Lord, that... Uh, that they come into these people's lives that need refreshing, that need uh, that th three to fight, to protect, and to be loyal around them. Lord, we just we just lift up those that are going through a hard time that uh, that their inner circle fights with them. That uh, that spiritual battle is reminded that you've already won it. You've won it with the blood on your on that cross. And with that empty tomb, because you are a living God. Lord, we just love you so much. We just pray that you continue to guide us all, lift us up, keep our head up, keep our eyes focused on you. And we just pray this in your mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, everybody, have a great Thursday. We love you guys. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you at church. See you then.